Welcome to the third session in our series of videos on how to critically appraise a randomized controlled trial following the CASP checklist. In this session, we'll answer the third question. Were all participants who entered the study accounted for at its conclusion? We're first asked to look whether losses to follow-up and exclusions after randomization were accounted for. The answer is usually presented as a flowchart in the results section. As you can see, the number of participants are clearly shown in each group they were randomly allocated to, from start to finish, alongside the reasons why some of them withdrew. A good study is expected not to lose more than 20% patients. It is common for patients to drop out of a study. It can be a simple reason as the participants no longer having the time to commit, or down to a more severe reason such as adverse effects of the treatment. It is important that these participants are still accounted for in the results analysis, not only to avoid attrition bias, but also to give a true reflection of the effect of the treatment being studied. For example, if some participants withdrew from the study because of serious adverse effects and they're not accounted for, the treatment might appear more effective than it really is. This is when intention to treat analysis comes in, which is the object of the second point we are asked to consider. In an intention to treat analysis, all participants are accounted for in the group they were randomly allocated to at the start of the trial, whether they dropped out or didn't follow the treatment. It preserves the original randomization and consequently avoid potential bias by excluding participants. The loss to follow-up showed that the control group had 176 participants at the start of the trial and 162 at the end. The ITT analysis should still account all 176 participants, which it did as Table 2 on page 813 shows. In the Dulexetin group, however, 178 participants started the study, but only 177 were accounted for. On page 811, in the Statistical Methods section, the authors explain that all patients who received at least one dose of the study drug and had their BPI severity average pain recorded at baseline at at least once during treatment were included for the primary outcome results analysis. And all patients who received at least one dose of study drug were considered for the safety outcome analysis. It is common in studies of drug treatment to see an altered ITT analysis where only the patients who have taken at least one dose of a study drug are included. This might be the reason why one participant in the duloxetin group wasn't accounted for in the final results. When performing an ITT analysis, the difficulty lies in estimating the results for those participants for which there's no data because they withdrew from the study or didn't follow the treatment. However, there are various ways to estimate this data. We'll look now at how the authors dealt with this challenge. In the supplementary materials, the authors provide further details on how they handled the missing data. They relied on the last observation or baseline observation carried forward approach, respectively called LOCF and BOCF for short. BOCF was used for patients who withdrew from the study because of adverse effects or lack of efficacy, and LOCF was used for patients who withdrew for any other reason. Studies can be stopped early for various reasons from lack of funding to safety reason. This is the last point we are asked to consider. There is no indication that the study was stopped early. So, were all participants who entered the study accounted for at its conclusion? People might give different answers here. Some might consider that, strictly speaking, no ITT analysis was performed because one participant from the Dulaxetin group wasn't accounted for in the results analysis, and so tick no. 
Some might think that since it is a drug study, the ITT analysis was altered, taking into account only the participants who had at least one drug dose, and assume that one patient wasn't accounted for in the dolexicting group in the final results analysis because they didn't take at least one dose of the study drug. In this case, we would tick yes. If unsure, you can always choose Contel.